We have dual tropical systems out here in the southern Pacific towards the east and west of Fiji. This is Yasa and Zazu out here, and both of these storm systems are potent in their own rights. But I really want to talk about Yasa because this is definitely the storm that's going to be having the larger impact on a broader scope of people here across uh, Fiji from Vite Levu to uh, Vanua Levu as well as this pushes over Head. So definitely want to continue to track this one. Take a look at visible satellite imagery. Key thing that stands out as the sun came up here on the morning of the 16th. Is just look at that eye. It is well defined, continuing to circulate here. Plenty of that popcorn kind of clouds top popping up here around that center of circulation, indicating that growing storm system. Not to mention next, everybody looks at the eye. One thing I also notice here is that serious outflow aloft. That indicates kind of the engine and the bigger lungs for this to breathe. What I mean by all that is that this is a growing and very serious storm. Those out ahead of it across Fiji need to prepare now because by Wednesday evening, we're already going to be seeing the impacts as this pushes on shore. Right now, winds are rated from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center of 203, gusting up to 250 kilometers per hour. That puts it about a Cat 3 on the Saffron Simpson scale. A Cat 5, though, on the Fiji Meteorological Scale, which is the official warning agency for, obviously, Fiji. So it's a Cat 5. It is going to remain a Cat 5 as it nears the islands here, just take a look at this scope of this storm system. It is absolutely impressive. This is actually the official warning from the Fiji Met Agency. Now they do have the intensity a little bit weaker at this time as far as their estimation on the winds um, than the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. They have it a cat four, but it's gonna to continue to intensify based on them. So regardless, once it does impact the land, it's still gonna be a Cat 5. Same with the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. They have this intensifying upwards about 120 knots sustained as it passes by uh, 130 knots is a super typhoon, by the way. So um, I'm kind of throwing all these scales around here. Once we get up to this intensity though, it doesn't really matter. It does matter, of course it always matters, but it matters in the fact that um, there's going to be destruction. There's going to be serious damage here. That's why the prime minister is actually urging people to prepare now. He said, this is not just something I'm saying because I don't like to be accused as a scarecaster or hyping things up. The prime minister put out that there is widespread destruction possible there on the islands, likely with this landfall as a Cat 5. So those are the main points. And if you're watching from Fiji, let me know because I am... Um, I usually do typhoon videos, hurricane videos. I don't really touch too much on Fiji and the Southern Hemisphere for that matter. So if you're watching from there and you find this video useful, please let me know and just give that feedback. Comment down below, say hi, wherever you're from if for that matter. All right, I wanna talk about the model forecast because I just showed you the official agencies with that storm passing as we go ahead into Thursday between Vite and uh, Vanua. Uh, Levu as it pushes over Fiji here, but there's the guidance from the ECMWF model. And you notice how this spaghetti plot kind of spreads out. One thing that we don't have in the Pacific Ocean anywhere is hurricane hunters. They fly into a storm, they get an exact measure of that center of circulation. We do all our intensity based on satellite analysis. When you do that, there is a limit of air. So no matter how good your numerical guidance is, your weather models, there's going to be air. Uh, it, it's just because of chaos theory. You kind of take these different starting points and it spreads out. So what I'm saying all that for, I know I'm going to show you the guidance here. You've seen the models. If you're not in that center line, though, you still have that chance of this storm wobbling just because there is some air in the forecast here. I'm showing you ECMWF, though. That is... Uh, really leaning more towards what the official agencies are saying at this time. So here you go. By Wednesday morning, our storm system's out here, already starting to see those waves out ahead of it. By Wednesday evening, though, some convection's going to be popping around, and we're already going to start to see that flow coming on shore across Vanua over Vivete as well, especially on that northern coast. Some of that area is, though, once you start to get that orographic lifting, it starts to hit the hills out here. We're really going to start to see that rainfall come down, already looking at that chance of isolated pockets of flooding by the time we head into Thursday morning. Now, by the time we head into Thursday afternoon, I should say late morning into the afternoon, the bulk of that core wind, the tropical storm strength conditions, 
will start to move over the islands here. Uh, the core, though, will be seeing winds over 200 kilometers per hour sustained. Based on the guidance right now, like I said, there will be air. Huge caveat here. But based on guidance right now, the west coast of Vanua Levu is going to be the hardest hit areas out here. Well away from the capital down here towards the south where the bulk of the, the highest population is, I should say. But... Uh, you're still going to get that backflow coming around it. This is definitely the type of situation where there could be some very serious damage as far as wind, um, storm surge, the low-lying coastal flooding as well. Uh, definitely all these aspects here. And especially with the, the as we go ahead into Thursday night and Friday morning, a lot of these smaller islands south of the bigger ones off here towards the north are really going to take the impact. And I think storm surge is going to be a bigger influence here because you don't have as much of a coastal rise. When you don't have much of the coastal rise, that storm surge is going to be uh, having more of an impact as far as the flooding is concerned. So definitely this is something we're watching out for by Thursday, heading over towards Friday as well. Well, here's just one thing I do want to show you. I just showed you the ECMWF guidance uh, as it passes over. There's the wind swath from the ECMWF. The global forecasting system, the American weather model, actually shows the bulk of the winds over towards the west coast of Vete. So there's a difference here. And that's one reason as well I said there's a, cone of, there's a cone of air. That's why we have a cone of air when making these tropical forecasts. So, uh Thanks for watching this video. If you are in Fiji, though, I highly, highly stress continue to check back in with the Fiji Meteorological Agency. There's some fantastic weather forecasters there in Fiji. I've actually talked to a few of them on Twitter and on Facebook as well. Uh, check in with them. Those are the guys on the ground. Those are bringing the best information. But if you do like this video, as I mentioned earlier on, please let me know in the comments section down below. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and I even post on TikTok as well. Of course, number one thing, as always, is definitely stay safe out there. Thanks for watching.